the capsize test, the reason we're doing this is because in the 1979 fastnet, 15 people died. Um, and many of those were because they got out of boats as solid as this one and into life rafts, which weren't, obviously. And only five of those boats that were abandoned out of the 24 actually sunk. And a lot of people, life rafts in those days weren't as well built and they fell apart and people drowned. And if they'd stayed with their boats and had everything secured down, a lot of people would have come through that race without dying. Yes, I have one time been upside down in a multi-hull uh, off, uh, off the north coast of uh, Scotland, Muckleflugger, and uh, it's a very disorientating experience. And I, I do remember all your orientation completely goes, uh, and not only that, everything inside the boat was immediately flooded, everything inside the boat immediately went out of the hatch, uh, and uh, including all the knives and all the other things that you needed to work with. So it was, a, it was a very disorientating experience, but the point of the purpose of this test really is to see what will happen to a classical cruising boat in, uh, in this kind of extreme situation. And what we've done, uh, we've taken out the lifelines because the strops would crush them. We've removed the mast, which would probably be removed anyway in the cap size. And uh, we've taken a range of measures down below to make sure that it's a safe environment. We've hooked the boat up to a crane, but we've hooked it up with strops that rotate right the way round either side, fore and aft of the, of the fin keel of the boat. Uh, and what that will do is it allows us to, by pull it, simply lifting on the crane, the boat will rotate inside the strops uh, until she goes to 180, but we've also got an additional turn on the boat so that when we get to that position, we should be able to pull the boat up uh, to 90 and she should rewrite. Now this is the forward cabin. This is where I'd prefer to be in a capsize. Um, there's less far to fall, there's less stuff flying around, much safer. We've also taken the precaution of screwing down the boards. Um, we just screwed them down because it was a lot quicker than doing anything else. There are loads of more elegant ways you can do it, but that was the quickest. So moving back, we've done the same with the sole. That's all screwed down to keep those in place. Um, what else have we done? We've put some string over there so that that's secure. And in situations like this, we've got uh, latches to make sure this doesn't open. Obviously dividers and sharp things in there, so that's all safe. And to find out what actually happens, we've got some cameras mounted around the boats and some lights, which are going to be crucial because uh, upside down it gets very dark in here. Here are the capsized crew. So we've got this one off watch, having a ziz, and this one here at the galley. There's another one in the forward cabin, um, ideally to demonstrate that not much is going to happen in there. Uh, but yeah, that's our crew. So what happens to them? is what would happen to our dear reader if, uh, in the event of a capsize. We're doing two tests today. The first one is with all the security stuff in place. Then we're going to do it again where we take the netting off and we unscrew the sole and then we capsize it again. And that's the full drama that these cameras will capture. So the worst case scenario is something fails on the boat. We're only working with the fittings that are on the boat and these fittings are going to be subjected to loads that they're not used to seeing. So the worst case scenario is we somehow get the boat to 180, she begins to flood with water, we attempt to right her using, using the strops and something on the boat breaks and as a result we lose control and I suppose the worst case scenario, the boat sinks and that would be a bit of a disaster and we'll need to get the divers out. <laughs> Thank you.
Worked, unbelievable. When it was held nearly upside down, I, I was worrying about like it's just going to fill up and it's going to sink. And but she's back here. She doesn't look too low in the water. We may not have too many unpleasant surprises. There is so much water in here. We sealed this up pretty good and. Uh, it doesn't seem to have made much difference. We spent a while upside down, but I mean, the standing water here, it's here. This is soaking. This guy's broken in half. Uh, what else we got? Uh, yeah, this is, whew. Okay. It's just, everything is soaking. These held up pretty well. Contents of that stay put. We have lost a plate. Yeah, we lost a couple of plates. Uh, it's soaked. This boat is full of water. Wow. Okay. Bit of a tidy up job here. Okay, after test one, I guess the first thing is just the amount of water that came in. You can see on the video streaming in, uh, I guess from the vents up there. The windows held up really well, the hatches seemed fine, so it was just water from here and from the two vents up forward, but just a ridiculous amount of it. You can see it piling up in the video. Uh, this test, uh, this is supposed to be the messy test, um, which is amazing after the first one. So what we've done, uh, we've left the boards up, we've unscrewed these, so those can all move now. So this is just kind of like an average boat now. We've also, uh, removed all the safety from here, so these are just open and the contents will pile out. We've removed some cushions because they were blocking the cameras. Uh, we've removed the netting from the galley so all those plates are free to move. Likewise the bottles in the locker there. Uh, the chart table is now unlatched, so that just opens. Likewise the stove hatch. So, uh, well the next time we're down here, it's going to be a bit of a mess. And I looked through that forehatch and there's this dummy sort of crushed between the V-berth with his hands sticking up, like really like a dead body. And it was, was a bit like a crime scene going down below. Uh, not as much water as I thought might be in the boat because it hadn't come up, up above the sole, which we'd screwed down. So that was a surprise. But then as you went through the boat and looked at other parts of it, there's a, um, a locker under the chart table that's full of water. Um, the cushions are all full of water, there's the under seat lockers, there was stuff that we'd left in there, some of which we probably should have removed, like an electric drill that was full of water. I think the electric drill is still working fortunately, because we need to be able to unscrew the sole boards next to, to show what happens in the next part of this test when things aren't fastened down basically.
Well, the chain's come out, but not much of it. That's it, so that held up pretty well, somehow. Okay. Whew. There's one guy buried here. Oh, man. Oh, unbelievable. This is part of the table, which I guess was taken out by one of the Kevin Soul boards. He's in the best shape, the guy with the strap. This guy didn't fare at all well. And it's just, this can take a long time to clear up. It's just carnage, there is stuff everywhere. The soul boards have just gone crazy. They were clearly up on the ceiling at one stage because I think they've taken the leaf of this table out. It's landed upside down. There's, this must have been just a horrendous place to be. God knows where the plates went. Unbelievable. Two matches on the ceiling. Whew. There's still water leaking out of the engine compartment. Not pleasant, not at all pleasant. Really frightening. Very frightening. I, I can't imagine what it must have been like to be down here. It must have been absolutely terrifying. And extremely dangerous. The stove's come off its mounts. Ah, uh, no, this is... I don't ever want this to happen. The reason for doing this test was to find out why uh, the fastnet crews got out of solid boats like this and into life rafts. Um, and looking at that second test, it's absolutely clear to me why they did it, because they were terrified and they were in fear of their lives. Uh, and, well, they should have been. That was uh, horrendous down there, the state of it. And having looked at a, a couple of video shots of what's down below, you get a real idea of just the horror of being down there. Um, yeah, just, I'd have got off too, I'm sure of it. What we learned from the first test was that a lot of that can be averted or at least dealt with. So you can contain, for instance, the sole boards, they were screwed down so they didn't move first time. All the lockers were shut so they didn't move. A lot of, you know, there was a lot of cushions flying around and uh, the mannequins were moving. But in general, it was a far safer place on the first roll than on the second. Um, and that's kind of the aim of what we wanted to do here. That's, that's pretty much why we do this, to make sailing safer. What amazed me from that second roll was just the speed things were moving, that reeds flying across the cabin like a bullet and the chart table flipping open. The table, that's a solid table, and that leaf was flapping around and eventually it was knocked clean off. 
by one of the sole boards, and those sole boards are heavy, those are heavy boards. And just to see all that stuff lying around, there's one, there's a piece of the sole wedged under the handrails on the, on the cabin roof. That's, I uh, just carnage what was going on down there. Stoves off its mounts, there's water, everything. the place is just, that's going to take days to clear up. And yeah, just the damage of being down there, can't imagine it.